Hi everyone. On December 23rd, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memories of Theodulus, Saturninus, Eporus, Galasius, Evnikian, Zoticus, Agathopus, Basilides, Evaristus, and Pompey. And yes, I was reading those because I can never remember all of the names. But this band of brothers taken together are known as the Ten Holy Martyrs of Crete. Now, they lived during the time of uh, a truly horrendous pagan emperor named Decius, and this would have been around the mid-200s. Uh, Crete at that time was perhaps partially Christian, not completely. The Holy Apostle Titus, who was one of the 70, made many travels with the Apostle Paul, known as the Apostle to the Nations, and he was actually consecrated Bishop of Crete. Well, after the Holy Apostle Paul had been executed in Rome, Titus returned to Crete to take over his bishopric once again and succeeded in converting many of the pagans that were there. Now, today we think of the pagan religion as perhaps even something a little bit silly in many of our minds. However, we cannot neglect the fact that at one time it was widespread, extremely popular, and also extremely violent. That's one of the things that seems to go unnoticed about it. Well, in this case, Decius, who was about to go to war with the Goths and had a terrible dislike of Christians, decided that he would require everyone uh, in the empire to make sacrifice to the gods, both for the health and well-being of himself and for success in the upcoming war. Well, he decided to appoint another man, also named Decius, for the island of Crete. And this namesake turned out to be just as brutal and just as low as the emperor himself. So he sent out word that everyone was supposed to make these sacrifices. And as it turns out, there were 10 men, the aforementioned 10 martyrs of Crete, that came from six or seven different places and were all gathered together because they were known to be Christians. So for around 30 days, they were brutalized and tortured and put into prison and yet remained obstinate when they were finally brought forth before Decius, the commander of that region. And he said to them, what is your problem in all of this? I mean, you've had 30 days. You know what's coming. It's not that big a deal for you to do this. And so I beg you, so that we will have no violence, that you would offer sacrifice, as is your legal requirement as citizens of this country. Well, the 10 refused, and they refused in a most vociferous manner and said, it doesn't matter to us because we are Christians, we know who our God is, and we're not going to give in and sacrifice the love of our Savior for the love of your emperor. Well, of course, as usually happens, this infuriated the Decius who was in charge of all these uh, doings, and so he began to have them tormented and tortured in really some of the most horrendous ways. And we're talking about flesh being scraped off their arms, pegs and other th sorts of rods inserted into them. I mean, you name it. Back in those days, they took these sorts of things very seriously, and they did not hold back when it came to the violence that they would show against anyone's flesh for the sake of political reasoning. But yet the martyrs, though they were in terrible pain, they endured all of it. And then Decius said to them, but look, be reasonable now, because there are so many people, very educated, very well-known people that you know, who are making sacrifice to Zeus, 
to his wife Hera, to his mother Rhea, and yet they have no problems with it. Well, the ten martyrs said, yet, but we do, because we know Zeus. Zeus was actually a man, and he lived a most terrible life. The man was completely disgusting in all the things that he did, sexual perversions like you wouldn't believe. He was unkind to everyone, and in fact, we know where he's buried because he died, and he's here, and we know exactly where he is. And after he died, people started to worship him as a god and made a big deal about him. So the ten martyrs were saying that even the pagan mythology at the time had its basis in real people who lived and yet their lives were later distorted. Well, Decius wasn't buying a bit of it. He didn't like this idea at all, and he particularly didn't like being talked against and corrected by these ten men that he had just tortured incredibly for such a long period of time. So finally he said, well, that's it then. That's it. You are going to meet your death. And many of the pagan people around there were encouraging this. They said, yes, you know, do what you can to them. It was a spectacle. They wanted to see them suffer. And yet the martyrs themselves were even more resolved in resisting anything that was going to come against them. So finally Decius took the sword and had each one of them beheaded. But right before that happened, the martyrs actually were having a bit of a contest among themselves saying, well, which one of us should be the one to go first? Who will receive that honor? And one of the martyrs, who was named Theodulus, said, actually, my brothers, the person who is last to be beheaded is the most honored because he's going to have to watch all the other nine suffer this before him. And so it came to pass that the martyrs did indeed meet their end. And afterwards the faithful of the region gathered up their relics and buried them appropriately. Well, later, St. Paul, uh, one of the archbishops of Constantinople, came and gathered up the relics that were found in Crete and took them to Constantinople where he buried them along with many of the relics of the holy innocents, those who were slaughtered for the name of Christ that we read about in uh, the Gospels. So they did meet a martyric end, a brave end, living in a time where paganism was surrounding them, unbelief was surrounding them, and it was just a terrible and awful place to be in at that time. But because of their witness, and because of the efforts of the Holy Apostle Titus, and because of many saints of the Isle of Crete since then, Crete flowered and paganism was destroyed. Their witness, of course, should be our witness as well. We may not meet ends like they met, but it's very important for our confession of faith to be just as strong as theirs was, as theirs was, and they've shown us the example for all of us, especially during this holy season of nativity when the birth of Christ is about to occur. May their prayers guide all of us to the manger where we can greet the Lord with such fervor and love.